Welcome back, Grade 8, to our um, video lessons on chemical change. This lesson is Lesson 7, and we will continue with examples of synthesis reactions. So synthesis reactions takes two or more substances and creates a single substance from the two or more substances. Example four, five, we are using zinc and oxygen. Now you should have picked up that we need to represent the atoms, we need to find them on the periodic table and compare the size of the atoms. So zinc is an element in period four and oxygen an element in period two. So the zinc atoms, when we draw the diagrams to represent um, the atom of zinc is much bigger than the oxygen atoms and we've already discussed numerous occasions that oxygen is a diatomic element where it consists of two atoms of oxygen joined chemically. Now the zinc ox and oxygen join in the ratio one to one so one zinc atom will join to one oxygen atom. Now, if you look at that, the number of oxygen atoms on the left-hand side of the arrow is two compared to one on the right-hand side. That is not allowed because we are not allowed to destroy atoms. So we need to add another oxygen atom on the right-hand side. But the oxygen atom can't come alone. It's got to be joined or linked up or have formed a bond with the zinc atom. When we do that, we see that it looks like we've created another zinc atom because on the right hand side, we have two zinc atoms, but on the left hand side, only one. That's not allowed. So, because zinc is a metal and these atoms cling together, we will represent the second zinc atom like that. You are welcome to write it free from the first one, but I will be happy with that. As long as you know that it's not a diatomic molecule. In terms of symbols, we have two zinc atoms reacting with one oxygen molecule to form two zinc oxide molecules. So the ratio between the reagents, the reactants, two to one, and the products, two. Next example, oops, we've got some overlap here. I'm sure you can figure out the ratios there. Ratio is two zinc to one oxygen to two zinc oxides. Example six is carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. So you've got two substances making one. Now carbon monoxide's got one carbon atom joint. Oh my, the carbon atoms are in the same period as the oxygen atoms. So if we can draw them the same size. So a carbon atom is joined to an oxygen atom and it reacts with oxygen which is a diatomic molecule or element and it makes carbon dioxide so the carbon is joined to two oxygens like that. When I look at that, 
I see that on the left hand side I've got one, two, three atoms of oxygen. On the right hand side I've got two atoms of oxygen. That is not possible, so we need to add another oxygen atom. But this oxygen atom will not come without a carbon atom. And the product form is carbon dioxide. So there must be another atom of oxygen to make carbon dioxide. When I look at this now, I have a bigger problem because on this side I've got four atoms of oxygen compared to three atoms of oxygen and we've got one at two atoms of carbon there compared to one atom of carbon. So it seems like we need to add another carbon but if we add another carbon that carbon will not come without the oxygen because the carbon is part of the carbon monoxide. By adding the second carbon, I have sorted out the carbon atoms. There are four on each, uh, two on each side. And we have sorted out the oxygen atoms. There are four on each side. So now to write the equation in symbols to represent this chemical reaction, we've got two carbon monoxide atom uh, molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to form two carbon dioxide molecules. So the ratio between the reagents, the reactants and the products is 2 to 1 to 2. To finish off, we go a little bit more complicated. We go to hydrogen and nitrogen forming ammonia. So, Hydrogen atoms are the smallest possible atoms and they come as diatomic elements. Nitrogen is bigger than hydrogen because it's in period 2 compared to hydrogen's period 1. So the nitrogen atoms are slightly bigger. And I'm going to make them with a cross like that. Nitrogen is just like oxygen and hydrogen and fluorine and fluorine diatomic. So I can represent the molecule of nitrogen by the two balls pinned together like that. Ammonia is a compound formed by the nitrogen linking up to three hydrogens. So, when I look at this equation in terms of its symbols here, I see that I've got two hydrogens on the left hand side and three on the right hand side compared to the nitrogens, I've got two on the left hand side and only one on the right hand side. To sort this problem out, I need another nitrogen on the right hand side. But this nitrogen will not come without its three hydrogens. I've sorted out the nitrogen problem now, but I've increased the problem with the hydrogens. I've got six hydrogens on the left hand, right hand side compared to two on the left hand side. Oh, that's not difficult to sort out. I need another two molecules to have six hydrogens, hydrogen atoms. Remember, Two hydrogen atoms makes one hydrogen molecule. Now I've got six atoms on 
of hydrogen on each side of the equation. So that's in terms of symbols. We have hydrogen as diatomic, and there must be three. Plus oxygen is diatomic, going to ammonia, but there are two ammonias. Ammonia is NH3. So the ratio between the reagents, the reactants and the product is three hydrogens, one oxygen, two ammonia. Oh my. The next one is sodium reacting with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Now, sodium is an element in period three, where oxygen is an element in period two. So, oxygen atoms are smaller than sodium atoms, and oxygen atoms are diatomic so the molecule is diatomic now sodium and oxygen join in the ratio two sodiums joins to one oxygen like that now i see there's a problem i need another oxygen on this side but this oxygen will not come without its sodiums. Now I've created a big problem with the sodiums. I need four sodiums in order to have equal number of sodiums on each side of the arrow. So in terms of so the symbols, we need four sodium atoms to join to one oxygen molecule to make two sodium oxide molecules and the ratio then between the sodium and the oxygen is four to one to two sodium oxide this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. The last example of synthesis looks at lithium reacting with chlorine. Now, lithium atoms are smaller than chlorine atoms because they're in period two where chlorine is in period three. And we can say that chlorine is also diatomic. And lithium and chlorine joins in the ratio one atom lithium to one atom chlorine. So we see we have a problem here with only having only one chlorine on the right hand side of the arrow. So we need to put another chlorine on the right hand side, but it will not come without a lithium atom because the product is lithium chloride. We therefore need another lithium atom on the right hand side, on the left hand side of the arrow. So in terms of symbols, we need two lithium atoms to react with one of, um, chlorine molecule to form two lithium chloride molecules. I hope you found this video informative and that you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.